Hey, welcome back to chemistry, and we're going to continue on through our tour of molecular structures. And so now we're going to consider molecules where the central atom has six electron groups. And so the first one we're going to be looking at has a code of A, B, 6. So let me quickly bring up um, an example molecule here. So A is the central atom. If you look carefully, um, there are six atoms of another element, call them B, attached to it, and they're in different positions in space. And so I think what you can sort of see is that each of these atoms in this molecule are attached by a single bond, which counts as a bonding group. Um, the central atom doesn't have any lone pairs, no lone pairs, six single bonds which act as bonding groups. So there are a total of six electron groups here. So let me write out the Lewis structure of an example of this molecule. So the example would be selenium hexafluoride. And so its Lewis structure looks like this. There's selenium in the center of the molecule. And then there are six fluorine atoms bound to it. So what you can clearly see is that selenium definitely breaks the octet rule, right? And it's fine. As I recall, selenium is in um, period, uh, I think it's in period four. Yeah, it's in period four. And so it can have more than an octet. And here in this molecule, um, it has, well, there we go. <laughs> it has um, 12 electrons um, that are bound to it. Okay, so now let's draw a picture of what the molecule looks like. And so I want to compare that to an earlier molecule we had and sort of um, talk, talk about the similarities between these molecules and, this, and the differences of this molecule. So here in my right hand, I have the AB6 molecule. Here in my left hand, I have the AB5 molecule. <clears throat> so remember with the AB5 molecule, I was pointing out that we could differentiate the B atoms into two classes. We had axial atoms here and we had equatorial atoms here. And the way we could differentiate them is looking at the angles between the atoms in that with the axial atoms here, they were 90 degrees away from, say, the next atom, which was an equatorial atom. But with the equatorial atoms, they were 120 degrees from another equatorial atom. And so you can see there were a couple of angles that could be found in this molecule. Now, if you look at the AB6 molecule, it kind of looks similar, right? It looks like there may be some atoms here that we might consider axial and these might be considered equatorial, but here's the thing. Notice what the angles are between all these peripheral B atoms. So this angle here is 90 degrees, and then this angle here is 90 degrees, and then if we look at the equatorial atoms, this angle here is 90 degrees. So all the angles between the atoms are 90 degrees. Therefore, we cannot in any way discriminate which atoms are axial and which atoms are equatorial. So these appear axial and these four appear equatorial now, but if I just rotate this 90 degrees, so now an equatorial atom becomes axial, um, the molecule looks exactly the same as before. So you cannot in this molecule identify an axial or equatorial atom Again, it's because all the angles between the atoms are the same, which is 90 degrees. Okay, so let's draw a picture of it. Let's draw a three-dimensional picture of it to the best of our ability here. So we have selenium, which is the central atom. And so here I'm going to draw in a fluorine. I'm not going to indicate that this is an axial fluorine because, again, this structure does not have an axial atom. So here's another fluorine right here. And so to indicate we have four other fluorines bound, what I'm going to do is draw one fluorine heading out toward me in this direction, one fluorine heading out toward me in this direction, and then going into the board here is another fluorine, and then in this direction is another fluorine going into the board. And so one thing you'll notice, though, is that when you arrange the atoms like this, these four atoms will be in the same plane. And so here, um, actually it will be five atoms, right? The four fluorines and the selenium. So they're in the same plane. So that's fine. 
Okay, so what is the angle between the atoms? And so the angles between all the atoms here are 90 degrees, and so that's probably something you need to know. Okay, so now let's evaluate the central atom for lone pairs, bonding groups, and electron groups. So this molecule here has no lone pairs because selenium has no lone pairs in the Lewis structure, so it's zero. Bonding groups, again, are single bonds or multiple bonds. We have six single bonds. And so electron groups is just lone pairs plus bonding groups, so it's six. Electron geometry, this is called something you might not expect. It's called octahedral. So let me explain why that's the case. It seems like a weird name <laughs> since octa means eight, yet there are only six bonds leaving the central atom and they're going to other atoms. So why is it eight? Well, it's another way you can look at this molecule. I'll do my best that I can that I describe it. So here I'm pointing to one of the atoms in the molecule. Let's say this is the vertex of a triangle. And I'm pointing to this atom here, which is another vertex of a triangle. And here, the final vertex of, of the triangle I'm pointing here. So there's a triangle formed here. And you can sort of see the triangle um, forms the face, or a face, I should say, a face of the molecule here. And so you can actually look where other triangles are on the face of the molecule, and you'll be able to form eight triangles. So octa means eight, hedral means face. So it's eight faces or eight triangles can be formed this molecule, so that's why it has the name it has. Now, basically because for every bond there's an atom attached to it, the molecular geometry, which again just only considers the positions of the atoms in space, is also the same. It is octahedral. So we'll put that there. Okay, so the next molecule we're going to look at, or family of molecules, is the AB5E family. And so what will that look like? It looks like this. And so all I've done is I've taken the AB6 molecule and replaced one of the atoms with electron groups. So now we're down to five peripheral atoms, five B atoms attached to an A. Now we have, again, a lone pair um, in its place of the atom. So this is AB5E. And so what you can still see is that there's still six electron groups here around the central atom, right? It's just now that one is a lone pair and then the other five are still the five bonding groups going to the atoms. Okay, so what is an example of a molecule that looks like that? So the example here is bromine pentafluoride. So it looks like this, we have bromine here, and then we're gonna attach five fluorines to it, like this. And then we're going to have to put lone pairs around the fluorines, of course, like this. And then bromine has a lone pair, so I put a lone pair on bromine like this. Okay, so what is the picture of it? So the picture might look like this. Now bromine is the central atom. Now I can pick actually any of these atoms to exchange for a lone pair. It doesn't matter whether I pick one that's going up or down or one that's going to the side. It doesn't really matter um, because all these atoms are said to be, because the angles are between 90 or 90 degrees between all the atoms, they're said to be in equivalent positions. So I'll just, the top one will make a lone pair. That, that'll be fine. Um, and so here what we're going to do is we're going to just indicate where the other five fluorines are, so it's just pretty much like we saw with the previous molecule, like this. And then we have a fluorine on the opposite side of the lone pair. Okay, so you can see in this molecule, the central atom bromine has one lone pair. Um, bonding groups are just the single bonds. There are five of them, so there are a total of six electron groups that the bromine central atom has. The electron geometry continues to be octahedral because we're looking at all the electron groups, which is the lone pairs and the bonding groups. The molecular geometry, well, what we can do 
is here is the molecule, sort of as I draw in the picture here, but I'm going to flip it and I'm going to put the lone pair down. Now I'm going to hide the lone pair. So let's kind of look at the arrangement of atoms of space. And what you can see is there's a pyramid here, um, but instead of the base being a triangle, the base has four atoms, so it's a square base. So this is called a square pyramidal structure. So this is square pyramidal molecular geometry. Okay, the final molecule here is going to be A, B, 4, E, 2. Okay, so this has six electron groups. So the example here is xenon tetrafluoride. So let me draw a structure of this. And so we have xenon here, and it has four fluorines attached like this. And so we put a lone pair here and a lone pair there. Okay, so now let's draw a picture of this molecule. Okay, so here we have xenon as the central atom, and let's put the lone pair in the same place it was before in this molecule. Now, our goals, or goal, is to make sure when you add lone pairs, they can probably try to get as far away as they possibly can from one another because they're relatively bulky. So, in order for the second lone pair to do that, there are two places it could go. It could go on the opposite side of xenon from this lone pair, or it can go to the 90 degrees to the side of xenon. What's it going to do? Well, if it wants to get as far away from the other lone pair, then it's going to go on the opposite side of xenon. And so the other lone pair is here. And then we have four fluorine atoms here. Four. <laughs> F for fluorine. Okay. There we go. And so these four fluorine atoms are in the same plane. And so here what we have is we have a central atom with two low pairs. It has four bonding groups because they're four single bonds, six electron groups. It has six electron groups. Its electron geometry continues to be oct octahedral. But what is its molecular geometry? So here is the molecule. And so what I have is here a central atom with two lone pairs, one here, one on the opposite side of the molecule. And then the fluorines here are still in their positions that they were in. Um, and there are four of them, along with the xenon, and all five atoms, as you can see, are in the same plane. So if you just look at what the atoms are doing in space, um, it looks like they look like basically a square here, the shape of a square, and they're all in the same plane. So this is called a square planar molecule. So thank you for listening to that, and we will see you next time.